Southwest Financial Center, thank you so much for being here. I know it's not easy. The parking lot's already full, but you're here, and we're so excited to have you here. Can you guys hear me on Zoom? Yes. Oh, it might be. Oh, it's um, someone's not home. Sorry, we're getting an echo here. Here. I'm going to stand over here. There we go, so I don't have to sit down too much. All right, welcome. Well, before we begin, my name is Rosie Arslan, by the way. I've been um, in WSB for two years, and I'm very excited to be here. And I just love the campaign, and it is such a wonderful campaign because we're here to help people. And so one of the biggest things that we can do to help more people is to go to the big event. It's called G23. It is July 20th through the 23rd in Fort Worth, Texas, just in our backyard. It's just like, what, three, three and a half hours away, depending on how fast you drive. For me, it's like three. I drive really fast. Um, and what's the greatest thing about it is all the tools that we need to be able to do this business are basically compressed into three days. And not only do you get to learn from the top earners and producers of our company, but you also get to learn from other people who started out just like you did, just like I did. And maybe sometimes in even like more distressing situations, but they made it. They were able to work hard and move up and help a ton of people. And so if, if you think about it, you get training for three days for a very low price, like, and it's deductible, right? Because it's a business expense and you get to hang out with us. How cool is that? Here, I'm going to play the video real quick. It's a minute long to get you all excited. This is outside of Dickie's Arena. get to meet a ton of people, all the people that you've met on Zoom. You get to rally. <laughs> and you can feel the energy. Plus you get to see both. And Victor Salvador. <laughs> I mean, they call it a convention, but honestly, it's like, it's an experience and I definitely recommend it. So without further ado, um, if you have any questions about signing up for a G23, ask the person who brought you today. And without further ado, we're going to have Ruben, give us a presentation on, yes, oh, sorry. Um, if you're new here, before we do this presentation, if you're new and it's your first time, we ask you to go with Mary, because she's gonna give you some, I don't know what you're doing, Mary. What is it you're going to? So Mary's gonna go over the overview of WSB. So please follow her. And then do we have anybody, I don't think we have anybody online that's new. Do we have anybody online that's new? You don't have to use your computer. I'm saying you can't. Happy Independence Day, Papa. That's you. All right. So, now no more. Okay. So we'll get started. With Ruben. Yay! Right, hey, thank you very much for the introduction. So, we can do so much more than most people realize with our, that are in our company. But what I didn't realize until really recently, we keep going, keep going. Okay, we can do so much more than most other companies in our in our field. Oh. I'm a uh, sorry. Move over here. Move over there here. You okay, there we go. So you can be on. All right, there, we, there go. we go. Okay. So my name is Ruben Lowy. Um, this is my second time around with the business. I came on board in uh, 2006 
I was a mortgage and real estate broker in California and I had uh, shifted, I did a lot of uh, construction lending and that actually had a crash in 2006 and I shifted to uh, commercial lending, which I joke around, it's kind of like, a, it's feast or famine. It's like fly fishing for killer whales. You land one, you eat really good, but you lose a lot of them. And I would go to events to make clients, meet clients and uh, I went to this one event and the speaker was the guy that wrote the book Time in the Real Estate Market and it was like he had the script for that movie The Big Short and trying to explain with an overhead projector and transparency every time uh, these option arms would recast on the 13th month the unpaid interest would get added to the principal balance the uh, it would go in, become an interest only payment it would payment would go way up people would go into fault, walk away from the homes, and Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers would go out of business. And I went to my office, 10.30 at night, and I emailed all my client database, summarizing what this guy said. And the next day, I'm sitting at my desk with my head in my hands, like, what am I gonna do? My industry's collapsing, I get a phone call, invite me to a broker luncheon, showing me the overview. And right off the bat, what I saw was a way to help all my clients that I knew were never gonna pay off that mortgage, they're never gonna get out of debt, they're never gonna save for retirement. And I was, I figured my strategy was I'd help them with this and I'd get referrals for more mortgages in real estate. And I took this young guy, he was 26 years old, on 40 appointments in my database, gave him credibility and said I'd watch him do a presentation. And uh, I got like 10 referrals, I made like $6,000 that month in the mortgage business, but he made $30,000 and he got paid in four days. And I'm like, what are you doing? And that's what flipped me to this industry. Um, I got all my licenses, Life and Health Series 63, I haven't passed a 65 exam, November 2007. And the whole world collapsed after that. Um, 2008 was a really good year for me. 2009 was much better. Um, my dad died, my wife divorced me, my car broke down all in like two weeks. And I did other things. I did anti-piracy security down the Indian Ocean. I did, uh, that led me to the drone business, which was fascinating, but the FAA shut me down for six months. I was out of business. And then I got to the LED lighting business, which was hard, because LED lights are way more expensive. And uh, you had to teach people about LED lights before they really understood why it was beneficial. And then uh, I started working for another veteran, um, retired Army Ranger Colonel, Vietnam vet, PhD, had a lot of respect for the guy, serviced some produce warehouses in the Rio Grande Valley. I could just make enough to pay the bills, but I couldn't get ahead. And then I found an office of WSB with Bernadette Kim in, the, in Edinburgh, Texas. And I'd heard about Bernadette when I was on the blue team in California. So I had a lot of, I had respect for her coming in the door. So, we're gonna talk about some things. You can do so much more in our company than you can with other companies. And we can do so much more than most people here in this, comp in this business know. And I wanna help you get some information that may help you talk to some other professionals that are this close to what we do. Mortgage professionals, um, real estate agents, you know, what they do is so similar to what we do, but it's really hard to communicate with them. It's like, I joke around, it's kind of like trying to teach a drunk woman how to do the contemporary double two-step. They can't make that transition from side to the other side, side to the other side, walk, walk. But because of what's happening with interest rates going up, especially in the commercial side, they're, they're looking, they're starting to pay attention. So um, I, I grew up in Michigan, and uh, the only thing I had confidence in was fighting. I, I got a speed bag when I was like seven years old and I would stand on a chair to hit that thing every night, but I hit it every night. And the neural pathways got developed, I had fast hands and um, I got in a lot of fights and I was good at it. And then I had, a real, I had a principal that was smart enough to to compliment me or to guide me along that way and tell me like, you, you should get a, you know, work with these younger guys and, and help them you know, with their sports. You know, you're know, you getting athletic prowess, you should help these younger guys out. So I had a little crew of guys, making sure they keep up with their grades and gave them practice and help them, give them 
advice on things to do to keep in shape and all that kind of stuff. You know, it wasn't a lot. You know, just staying consistent with running and all that. But that's what I did, and it was smart for him to do. I joined the Navy to box, and we'll talk about that a bit. And I ended up seeing this uh, 12-year-old kid that looked like a miniature Sugar Ray Leonard. And I said, whoever taught him how to box, I wanted to teach me. And that was Roy Jones Jr. And his father was my trainer. And uh, I learned a lot. I had like 17 sparring partners that won a title or fought for a world title. Um, I knocked out four of them. You know, two of them fought each other for a world title. Should have been mine. You know, so I got around. Been, I've been to Sheryl Leonard's training camp twice. Went to his house, had dinner with him. Um, he knows me. He sees, if he sees me, he knows me. Um, so I've, I've been around in the Rio Grande Valley. They always want me to go down there and teach boxing clinics. I've got to try to get them to, to come this direction, but we'll figure that out. But uh, I joined the SEAL teams because uh, what's going on? Bit. Something happened. I'm gonna touch it. The, uh, I joined the SEAL teams because um, a Navy diver told me if I went to the SEAL teams, they'd send me to the Navy boxing team. And uh, that's what I did. And that's the hard way, but that's that's what I did. Uh, so I got to travel the world. I've been to like 33 different countries, but I didn't get to have fun. You know, it wasn't a vacation. I always joke around. I, it was like the armpit of the country, you know, whenever I got to go. But it, it helped me with my confidence. You know, I was Navy SEAL. There wasn't much I didn't think I could do. And then uh, I got my real estate license. I became a debt management consultant. When I got out of the military, I was so broke I couldn't change my mind. So I self-educated. I read every book you get your hands on, personal finance and debt management. Learned about a debt roll-up strategy. I didn't know how to use Excel, so I put it on a whiteboard behind my bedroom door. All my debts, the highest debt to the smallest debt, and every time I paid my bills, I changed the balances and I paid that first one off. And I take that payment and roll it up. If I made more money, I saved that money, but in the bank. I didn't know there was any other place. Okay, end up paying everything off, and uh, paid off everything, and uh, had fifty thousand dollars sitting in the bank, and I was behind. And I took some undue risk, which people do, and I financed uh, two treatments for an audience voting boxing television show, kind of like American Idol meets professional boxing. And uh, $75,000 of my own money, took it to the Nevada State Athletic Commission, and the commissioner at the time was Mark Ratner, and he told me, nope. The officials won't let you do it. So I was out of business and out of my money. And then the real estate mortgage market collapsed. And uh, I'm, that's something that uh, I am harp on all the time, you know, because when people start seeing they're behind, they start taking undue risk and they put themselves in even more jeopardy. So we want to stop that from happening. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to talk about um, getting the most out of the real estate. Like I said, there's so many realtor realtor and real estate and mortgage professionals out there that have a database already uh over the years they 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 got people that think well of them they put them in these great low interest loans like historically low interest loans that they're not going to want to refinance out anytime soon but they have that goodwill they have that that uh confidence those people have confidence in them and we want to help them capitalize on that all right so the uh you know, we talk about all the time the different buckets for taxes. The tax now, which is going to be your bank, checking savings, you know, individual stocks, mutual funds, things that if you get a, a return, you're going to pay, you're going to get a 1099, you're going to pay tax on that right that year. Then there's the tax later, which is going to be your IRAs and your 403Bs, TSPs, the qualified plans, um, the uh, annuities, you know, SEP IRAs, you know, they you get a tax deduction on the contribution, you get the rate off of your taxes, it grows tax deferred, so it's gonna go faster. But when you take that out, Sam's gonna want his pound of flesh. Right? And you so you know, you're gonna pay you're gonna pay sometime. And then there's the tax advantage, and that's like municipal bonds, uh, Roth IRAs, and then of course the seven seven zero two strategies, which is life insurance. And you can put more money away. And so we're gonna get into that. Then you have the the real estate professionals and real estate investors that they're looking at 
deferring their taxes down the road, kicking that can down the road, put that money into a bigger property, a bigger property, right? And they're they're brick rich and they're cash poor. Okay. And if that market goes down, I was doing, I had a lot, had a lot of investors in California and they had properties in Hawaii. And I saw so many of them in like one month. This one client I had, she had like 10 or 11 properties between San Diego, California and Hawaii. And in one month, over $2 million in equ up equity just evaporated. It was, she wanted to take the, she wanted to find, refinance that money out. And uh, before we could get through underwriting, the, in, the, the, the value just, bottom just fell out of it. And nothing I could do about it. Just gone. And then nothing they could do about it. You couldn't, there's no protection even there. Okay. But, you know, that's in the commercial side. Um, right now, commercial real estate, the values are starting to come down um, because of the, especially the retail on the retail side. So we're going to talk about that. There's, you know, I got the spy versus spy, spy thing here. You know, it's talking to them from what we do. There's just not, it's hard to make that connection. We're going to try to bridge that gap for you. So we're trying to, you know, get to get us to, to work together with real estate mortgage professionals. You know, when they're doing, especially commercial side, this is an acronym, try, trim up, stands for taxes, repairs, insurance, management, utilities, and payroll. So your, your income from the rents from your commercial properties minus your expenses give you your net operating income. Okay, so then, and I love this, this graphic here with a little teeter-totter there. There's the value of the property and the cap rate, which is a multiplier, okay, all over the net operating income. So the more net operating income that you have, all right, the uh, more leverage you give, the, the more value you can hang in the, in the value of the property or the, the uh, lower the cap rate. So this is the formula, your cap rate, is the income, uh, the income of the property divided by the value gives you your cap rate, or to figure out the value, it's your income divided by the cap rate gives you the value, and your net operating income times the rate, the cap rate gives you the value of the property. Okay, so that's how you do it. So there's a, there was a guy in San Diego, a, a veteran, he was a Navy pilot, and he would do seminars every week, real estate investor seminars. And this is all, he, he started off going over this every time, right? And get people to just like, okay, how do we do this? And he would offer consulting. He had a property management firm and I invited some property managers on today that they, that they, they would love this presentation. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Property managers love this presentation and this explanation because they're a key player when it comes to commercial real estate. They're gonna do a lot of the things that need to be done, keeping the occupancy up and the vacancies down. The more occupancies you have, the more income your property's earning. So you're gonna have a higher net operating income and, and a, a lower cap rate. So your property value is gonna go up based on the income that that's earning. And so he would talk about how he would consult with them and he would do little things like a good property management company, he would offer his right? They could increase the occupancy, lower the vacancies, you know, be more cost effective in the management side of it, get, do better advertising. They would, uh, they had a relationship with electrician and HVAC technicians that they put, they put solar on it, to help with the electric, you know, um, look, look the cost of uh, electricity in the building. If there was a space on the roof that they could lease out as a cellular repeater, that's income coming in. So all of these little things that they would offer, then he would show properties that he would have consulted for and how he brought their values up by applying these strategies. And some of these were for sale. And boy, the people in the room, the real estate investor people, their juices are flowing. They want a property that's gonna be making money, right? Or people that had real estate and they weren't doing so well, they wanted it. So this is what he would do all the time. I'd go to all his seminars all the time and 
and market my services as a lender, but he also had his own lender. He had his own lender with a better rate, and that can also make a difference. You know, you can you know, the best rate possible. So however, however, again, you're buying down, buy, you paying points to buy it down or whatever, but it can make that property worth more money because it has more cash flow. And this is where we come along, all right? And what can we do to help increase that cash flow? Another thing is the insurance.